running with or without shoes. Teenagers have treated sneakers, running shoes, tennis shoes, and basketball shoes as fashion wear despite of the original function of shoes, which is to protect a person's feet while walking and running. But don't forget that humans had been running on barefoot for millennia before the advent of footwear. Is barefoot or minimally shod running actually better for people? There is no concrete answer so far. Shoe manufacturer Vibram USA invented and produced five fingers running shoes, which look like gloves for the feet, and claimed that running with these distinctive shoes would be similar to running barefoot. Moreover, the company promoted the shoes by stating that they could strengthen feet muscles and prevent common running injuries. Five fingers shoes were also endorsed by Mr. Christopher McDougall in his book Born to Run. Recently, Vibram USA got into hot water for these marketing claims. The company has offered to settle a class action lawsuit that contended the company profiting from its unsubstantiated health claims. The factor for the lawsuit is that the proclamations pitched a panacea for common injuries from knee pain to shin splints. But the results didn't meet runners' expectations. Instead, it came with a new set of issues, including blisters and calf pain. Dan Lieberman, a professor of human evolutionary biology at Harvard who researches on running, believed that there was still a dearth of knowledge on this topic. The way of running is more important than the wear of the feet, Mr. Lieberman explained. Running form can happen both ways, run poorly with barefoot and extremely well in a shoe. General tips for good form include maintaining a cadence of between 170 to 180 steps per minute and landing relatively flat-footed. Dr. Lieberman also served as a consultant to Vibron USA. After reading several books on barefoot running, 46-year-old Sharon Gibson became enamored of the idea that chucking away the heavy and traditional shoes wouldn't just be liberating, but healthier for the feet. But then, she had a hard time adjusting to her five-fingers shoes, costing $100. She could only run for about half a mile in those shoes before her calves began to ache. A month later, she was back to running in the more traditional shoes. John Durant, a self-described professional caveman in New York City and founder of the meetup group Barefoot Runners NYC, stated that he started doing many of his runs totally shoeless some five years ago but has noticed a backlash has developed against the so-called gorilla shoes with toes. Mr. McDougall commented that he frequently gets messages from readers saying that they bought Five Fingers shoes after reading his book. To him, they missed the point he was trying to make, which was runners should find their own rhythm instead of relying on footwear.